man of God who is, uh, when he was here last year, uh, uh, he was a, an assistant, a special assistant to the general overseer of the Christian redeemed church of God in the world. And uh, the general overseer, the most able, and our father in Africa, uh, Pastor Adiboy. But later on, uh, within the year, uh, because when you come to Kenya, uh, uh, you get a blessing. He was blessed in Kenya. Why in Kenya? This man who is going to come right now, he is now what we would call here deputy or assistant general overseer for the whole world. It's a blessing to have this man here. You know, they have millions, millions of members, millions of members. One church they have in Nigeria is a three kilometers long length and the width the same and I want to take more time I just want to bring to you Pastor Peter Amkenan just listen to him as you eat because he is here by public demand he has brought another man will be introducing and you will be blessed to see the success in business and the success in the word of God. Very successful people. This man, I don't have to tell him all his credentials, but he's a great man, written many books. He is everything. I've been to his home, I've been to his country several times. So I'm on at this evening to welcome you here. Reverend Peter Ankena. If you can, can you give my hand, please? Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, in Food Gospel Business Men's Fellowship, we are eating and talking people. So when we are eating, we are listening, we are talking. So why enjoying your food? Let your ears be open. I I know that. Today, God is going to refresh you and bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. So when we say praise the Lord, if you can't say hallelujah, you say mm, 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 mm. We know you are saying hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. God bless you. God bless you. We are talking about business empowerment. And I want us to meditate on this very briefly. You read 2 King chapter 4, 2 King chapter 4. From verse 1 to 7. You know the scripture very well. You know the experience of the widow. Um, the wife of the uh, of a late prophet. Who came to meet the man of God. Elisha. Because she was in debt. And she came to meet the man of God. And complained to the man of God. You see. Since your servant died. We have been in debt. And the creditors have come to come and take my children. And the man of God asked him, ask her, I mean, ask her, what is it that you have in the house? You remember the woman had said, uh, nothing. If she had maintained that, she would not have achieved what she later achieved. But she later talked. She took inventory of what she had and said, oh, I have nothing but a little bottle of oil and the man of God said go and bring it there is something you have in your possession many of you have not discovered what you have in your possession there is something there is no man or woman with nothing there is something within you maybe your intelligence maybe wisdom maybe property there is something you have that if you can receive divine revelation about that thing and you surrender and submit that thing to God, that little thing can empower you to achieve your purpose on this earth. My prayer for you is that in the course of this dinner, in the course of the discourse here, yeah, you will discover that thing that you have that will lift you to the highest height in the name of Jesus. So he said, bring that that you have. And the lady brought it 
and you know the story. We are talking about business empowerment. To empower means to authorize, to authorize, to get permission to do something. So we are talking of business empowerment. Only the empower succeeds in life. And there are many avenues of empowerment. But please understand this. Only the empower succeeds in life. Only the empower succeeds in life. And there are many avenues of empowerment. You can be empowered through your faith. If your faith is empowered, you can reach the highest heights in life. So there's what we call faith empowerment. It can be family empowerment. There are those who are empowered by members of the family and they reach the highest height. You can be empowered financially. There are those who have financial empowerment and they make it in life. There is what we also call friendship empowerment. Oh, there are those who have good friends surrounding them and they make it to the highest height. You remember in Mark chapter 2, if you read from verse 1 to verse 5, there was a paralytic man, a man that was paralyzed. No hands, no legs. But he was empowered by friends and they took him to Jesus. I pray for you here, even if you don't have money, even if your faith is weak, that God will surround you with destiny helpers and you will be empowered to reach the highest height in the name of Jesus. That's why we gather like this so that you can network. You can relate with one another. Let us be good friends to ourselves because we can help one another to achieve greatness. And I am seeing people here who will achieve greatness. Nobody may easily tell the level you will get to in life now. But let me tell you, anyone will be writing you off and they are making mistakes. Very soon, God is going to jack someone here up. Who am I talking to? Who is God going to lift? He will lift you up. You will be rising. And you will reach the highest height in the name of Jesus. So, I want you to understand that there is empowerment that can come by faith, empowerment that can come through the family, empowerment that can come through finances, empowerment through friendship, empowerment through fitness. There are those who are able to do certain things because they are physically fit. The current world heavyweight champion is because he's empowered physically. He's fit. That's why he won that title. There are many other aspects of empowerment. There, are, there is what we call political empowerment. There is what we call uh, positional empowerment. When you are given a certain position and you have the empowerment to do what you could not do before. There is what we call promotional empowerment. When you are promoted to a certain level, you are able to do what you could not do before. There is what we call peace empowerment. When peace surrounds you, you are able to have the wisdom, the serenity, the freedom to do what you are supposed to do. There is what we call provision empowerment. When certain things that are required to do something, you have them at your disposal, you are empowered to achieve greatness. My prayer for each and every one of us is that as we eat here and discuss, you will discover the area that God has desired to empower you and you'll be empowered to achieve greatness in the name of Jesus. Now, there's something I want to emphasize before I round up. And that is that the man of God gave the instruction to this lady. said, go and borrow vessels. said, go and borrow vessels. Don't get few. Get many. And then bring them. I want to say something about that. There's also something I want to say about Matthew chapter 25. If you read from verse 14 to verse 30. Matthew chapter 25. The scripture talks of a man going to a far country and he, he gave gifts to servants. And the scripture says he gave them according to their several abilities. According to their several abilities. This is a very powerful statement. What does it tell me? It tells me that whatsoever I have now is according to my ability. If you don't have much now, what you have now is according to what? Your ability to handle. God is a good God. He doesn't discriminate. He weighs our ability. He examines our ability. He knows what I can handle. So if I need to have more than I'm 
having now, I should increase my capacity. Capacity is the ability to receive and contain. So if you want to have more from God, you should have what we call increased capacity. Increased ability. He gave them according to their several abilities. So the one he gave five, he knew that he could handle five. The one he gave two, he knew that he could handle two. The one he gave one, he was still wondering, can this one even manage one? Let me just test him with one. And who failed? The one that had one. The one that had five, showed great ability. The one that had two, showed great ability. The one that had one, failed woefully. There are many people who are grumbling today. Oh, everybody is making it. Everyone is stealing. Let me tell you, not everyone that is rich has stolen. You don't need to steal before you can be rich. Watch your capacity and your ability. I've always told myself, all the things I desire, if God sees that I have the ability and capacity to handle them, that I will not lose my head, if he gives them to me, he will give me more. There are some of you here, if God is to give you a private jet, you will be slapping your wife, you will be slapping every person on the road. Because you lose your head. So God says, let him be right. If it's bicycle, let him remain with this bicycle. As long as there is peace in that home and peace in that environment. So, I want to beg you, one of the areas that you need to do something about is increasing your capacity and your ability. If you can do that, you will succeed in life whatsoever you are looking for. And there are many areas that you need to increase your capacity and your ability. You need to increase your pain capacity. There are some of you right here now, if God is to give you more opportunity to expand your business, you can't bear the pain. God knows the pain you can bear because no pain, no gain. Those who are handling very good Big corporations, if they tell you the pain in handling such, how they endure such pains, you will know it's not easy. So, for you to handle something bigger, you need to increase your pain capacity. The capacity to bear and endure certain things, you need to increase that capacity. You need to increase and grow your relationship capacity. There are some of you, your circle of friendship and influence is very small. Because you can't relate very well. You are always offended. And when you have to deal with many people, there will be many offenses. And some of you will lose your faith. You will lose your head. Because you can't relate with so many deviants. To be able to, to rise and become a great person. The president of this nation. There are so many deviants that we have to relate with. So others of you are dreaming to be the MD of big corporations. Maybe the head of the anti-corruption organization here, there will be people who will love you a lot who will hate you. You have to increase your relationship capacity for you to be able to do well and rise. There is what we also call crisis handling capacity. You have to increase your crisis handling capacity. There is what we call character capacity. You have to increase your character capacity. Living, learning to live clean no matter the situation you find yourself. There is what we call risk capacity. You have to increase your risk handling capacity because no risk, no rising. So if you want to grow, have a big business, you want to expand your cost of influence, you have to increase your risk handling, risk taking capacity. There is what we call caring and compassion capacity. There are some people, the more money they have, the more wicked they become. They don't care for anyone. They become more selfish. For God to bless you, and we are talking of kingdom business, for God to release more to you, you have to increase your caring and compassion capacity. You have to increase your patience capacity. If you are going to be able to deal with people, deal with many types of characters, you have to learn to be patient. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, that is with patience that the apostles obtain the promise. It's with patience that we can bear fruit. So you have to increase your patience capacity. You have to increase and improve your faithfulness capacity. He that is faithful in a little will be given much. So if the one God has given to you now, you are finding it very difficult to be faithful, 
or whatever you are given to handle. You can't even handle it with faithfulness. Somebody has given you business and you are stealing from it. You are cheating the person. He doesn't know. Then you are limiting your growth. You are limiting the level you will get to in life. So you have to increase your faithfulness capacity. Whether the business is yours or is public or is private, you have to increase your faithfulness capacity. Learn to be faithful in whatsoever you are doing. And I'm sure you know now, it's getting very difficult to find faithful people to give something to manage. Because a lot of people are in a hurry to make it. You have to increase your faithfulness capacity, your love capacity, your grace capacity, your vision capacity, your faith capacity, your prioritizing capacity. Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that others are looking for will be added to you. So if you have not learned to give God the first priority, if he is not number one in your priority, you will never, you will hardly get to number one by divine arrangement. So you have to also increase your prioritizing capacity, learning to give God his proper place, learning to give God what belongs to God. For example, one tenth, tithe belongs to God. So if you already, you are a millionaire now, you have one million, and it's difficult for you to release a hundred thousand as your tithe, it will be difficult for God to make you a billionaire. Because if you cannot give a hundred thousand now, you are angry that, oh, you mean that church or that other, they want 10%, my 10? How will God then give you a billion? Learn to increase your prioritizing capacity. Learn to increase your obedience capacity. Learn to improve and increase your giving capacity. Giving is living. If you are the type that everything you have, you hardly give to anyone, you are limiting yourself. Giving is living. What you are not willing to give is going to be very difficult for God to bless you with more of such a thing. So you have to also increase your obedience, your giving capacity, your power capacity, and so on and so forth. Let me round up. In life, there is what we call the phases of life. You have the learning phase. I always say this, you have the earning phase and you have the ending phase. The learning phase is from when you are born till around 18, 20, 25, when you, you learn. Even though we learn through life, this is properly when we are in school, we are being taught. You have the earning phase, the phase you are now working, earning money. Your business is bringing money or you are employed. And that is from around 25 to about 60, 65, sometimes to 70. And you have the ending phase. That is when you are now getting close to the grave, getting cl close to departing to heaven. What you do with the learning phase will depend on what you have with the earning phase. What you do during this earning phase, how you impacted life, how you network, how you live with God, what you give to God, will determine the ending phase, how you end your life. There are a lot of people who end life regret, with regret, they end life miserably because they misuse their learning and earning phase. I believe many of us are still in the earning phase. What will you do for God? What will you do or what are you doing for humanity? What are you doing for your family? Are you just gathering and gathering and gathering? How much will you eat? There are many people who fall down and die. And their wives and their children don't even know where they have kept the money. And other people take the money away. This is the time to do something for the kingdom. Do something for humanity. Do something for the fathers of the faith. Take care of those who are already in the ending phase so that God will also take care of you. My prayer for you is that from here, every one of you will be empowered in wherever you are operating, your business, your work. And no one here is permitted to die a pauper. You will not die a poor man. You will not die a poor woman. In the name of Jesus. Whatever resources God has given to you, you will benefit from it. 
The kingdom will benefit from it. Humanity will benefit from it. And you'll be a rising star. You will fulfill your destiny. God bless you. Thank you. Let us pray. I'd like you to stretch forth your hands. Let's pray. I stand on the faith of my fathers that are here who have been used mightily by God anointed. I stand on the rock, the Lord Jesus. And I pray for you from the depth of my heart. Whatsoever is your challenge now, whatsoever is not allowing you to have fullness of joy, fullness of peace, I ask that the Lord will remove such a thing from your life in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. I know we are all at different levels, at different phases in life. I don't know your level, I don't know your phase. But I know that there is something God can do in your life that will move you to a higher phase, move you to a higher level in business, in the faith, in your family. Whatsoever needs to be done that will make you to enjoy fullness of peace and progress and prosperity, receive in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that by the encounter of this evening, where people have written you off, where they have put a limit on you and your progress, that ceiling, that limit, be removed from your life and businesses in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that God will touch your faith, touch your family, touch your finances. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Whatever sickness is in your body, whatever does not allow you to reach your full potential, I decree it out of your life in the name of Jesus. I have that to be blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in. As you have this desire to live for God and do God's will, I have that to be empowered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Thank you. May be seated, please. I call Brother Monty to come and lead us our mission of being able to expound on what for gospel business and fellowship is. Thank you. Thank you very much, our chairman and our very able patron. Uh, I'm very glad yet again to bring to us a very relevant and modern uh, organization, a movement that we can proudly all identify with that is inclusive of all our affiliations and our aspirations, being the business people, the, uh, the professionals of our day. Uh, I want to bring to us to the brochure right on your table, uh, on the rear side, if we may uh, go together. On the rear side, I want to, where there is the introduction, yes, the part which is uh, less colored, it's more white. As you can see on the front part of our brochure this evening, uh, right at the bottom is that we connect people with opportunities. Yes, it is right here and in such kind of forum as we spread our wings to, other, to build up other chapters in the nation and indeed in East Africa. We're going to make sure that we are, uh, every place we are loading with opportunities because we need to reach out and help others find a better life. Because trust you me, it is very lonely up there. It's very lonely as you work out your individual areas.